Okay, this problem is a little bit longer. We're given these three points, A, B, and C, and they're going to form a triangle. We want to tell if it's isosceles, a right triangle, if it's both, so isosceles, right triangle, or if it's not any of those. We also want to find the area of triangle ABC. Probably best to plot the points first. That way you have a little bit better idea of what's going on. You can see all three sides of the triangle and you get a little bit better picture about what's going on. So I'm first going to start by plotting the points. The first one is negative 2, 5. I'm going to go two places to the left and we're going to go up five units. So right there is going to be point A. Next we want to plot point B. We're going to go 12, so I've counted out 12 going this way and then up three would be right here and this is going to be B. Next, I want to plot C, 10, negative 11. So 10 is going to be two back this way since this is 12. So 10 here, and I've counted down 11. Uh, so right there is going to be point C. Now we're going to connect all these with lines. And when we connect them, you'll see that it does form a triangle. Now, I can't really tell too much about this just from the drawing. It kind of looks like this might be a right angle, but I, I don't really know for sure. So I'm going to have to check it out uh, with math to confirm that. And particularly, I'm going to be using the distance formula. Now what I want to find is I want to find the distances of all three sides of the triangle. That means that I want to find A to B, B to C, and A to C. So I want to find all three of those distances. To do so, we need to use the distance formula, so we're going to start off by doing that. So, the first distance we want to find is the distance from A to B, and then I also want to find B to C, and then A to C. Now, the points are given there for A, B, so I'm going to use these points that are already labeled here for us. So I'm going to label this one X1, Y1, X2, and Y2, and I'm going to put these into the distance formula. Okay, so this, I want to do the square root of the x values, difference of the x values here, so 12 minus negative 2. Difference in the y values, 3 minus 5. And then I want to simplify that. When I simplify it, this is going to give me 14 squared, and this is negative 2 squared. And when I simplify it, that's going to give the square root of 200. I'm just going to leave it in that form. I'm not going to break it down at this point. Next, I want to find the distance from B to C. So what I'll do is I'm just going to relabel my points. So now I'm going to use B to C. Here's my X1, Y1. And I'm going to use X2, Y2 with my point C. Now I'm going to put these into the distance formula. Difference in the X's is going to be 10 minus 12. Difference in the Y's, negative 11 minus 3. And then now I'm going to simplify this. Negative 2 squared plus negative 14 squared. That's actually the same two numbers I had above there. So once again, I'm going to also get the square root of 200 for this one. Because these are both the same, I can now tell that this is definitely going to be an isosceles triangle because isosceles means that two of the sides are going to be equal. So I know I definitely have that, but I want to find the distance from A to C, so that way I can put all these into the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and that'll tell me if I have a right triangle or not. So A to C, put that in here. I'm going to put in now, I'm going to relabel my points. This time I want to use, this one is X1 and Y1, and I'll leave that as X2, Y2. Put these into the distance formula. I have 10 minus negative 2. Be careful of the double negatives. And I have negative 11 minus 5. And so now I want to simplify each of these. That's going to be 12 squared plus negative 16 squared. And when I work that out, I'm going to get the square root of 400. So now, since I have all three sides of this triangle, I now need to put them into the Pythagorean theorem and determine whether I have a right triangle or not. So what I'm going to do is, I, here is the, the uh, for, formula I'm going to use. is going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I already have all three of my sides right here. Square root of 200, square root of 200, and square root of 400. The longest side, square root of 400, that has to go into your C. So that goes in right here. The other two sides, it doesn't matter which one you put in, they're both the same anyway. So I'm going to put in square root of 200 for each of these. 
And now, if it really is a right triangle, this should be a true statement. I should get exactly the same number on both sides. The square will get rid of the radicals in both these cases. So I get 200 plus 200. This one, radical disappears, and I get 400. That is a true statement. 200 plus 200 is 400. So I know for sure that this is going to be in a right isosceles triangle. It's isosceles because two of the sides are the same. It's a right triangle because we just did this test right here. This test only works for right triangles. Pythagorean theorem will always work for any kind of right triangle. If we didn't get the same numbers on both sides, then we know it's not a right triangle. The next thing we have to do is figure out the area of this triangle. So I'm going to redraw the triangle based on the numbers that we had earlier. We have square root of 200, a square root of 200, and we have a square root of 400. That's the three sides in my triangle. I just kind of redrew it this way. Now, when you do the area of a triangle, the base and the height have to be at a right angle to each other. So this is going to be 90 degrees uh, right here. The formula is 1 half base times the height. I'm going to put in my base, which is the square root of 200. The height is also going to be the square root of 200. These have to again be at a right angle to each other and that's why I'm not using the square root of 400. I only want to use the square root of 200 for both of those. Now when I multiply these two radicals together, I'm going to get the square root of 200 squared because you can multiply inside the radical and the, the radical is going to uh, disappear because of the square that's there. Those cancel out. And so we get 1 half times 200 and that's going to be equal to 100. So that would be the area of this triangle. Now there's no units on this, there's no inches or centimeters, so because of that, that means that your answer is not going to have any units, it's just going to be 100. If you wanted to put units with it, it would technically you would just put 100 square units, or you can just leave your answer as 100.